Hey guys, this is Sweet Vacations, and if you're hearing anything in the background of this review, it's my mom watching Rock or Rocky Horror Picture Show, so you might hear Rocky Horror Picture Show music. So I hope I do not get a copyright claim just because, oh, Rocky Horror Picture Show was copyrighted by... I'm not fucking watching Rocky Horror, my mom. Anyway, although I do like Rocky Horror Picture Show. Don't get me wrong, I do. But anyway, that's not what I'm reviewing. What I'm review reviewing is an underrated thriller called ICU, which is also known as Detox. It stars Sylvester Stallone, and um, it's a movie that's pretty much disowned by its studio. It's originally going to be released by Universal, but Universal said, fuck this movie, and disowned it for some reason. They decided it was so unreleasable and so shady, which I don't understand, and uh, it has a really stellar cast. you got Stallone, you got Tom Berenger, you got Charles S. Dutton, you got Sean Patrick Flannery. Dina Meyer, Robert Patrick, Robert Prosky, Courtney B. Courtney B. Vance, Holly Walker, Jeffrey Wright, and Chris Stopperson. It also has a really underrated solid score by John Powell. And uh, based on a book, Jitter Joined by Howard Swindle. I'd probably have to say the biggest problem this film has is the directing. Jim Gillespie is not the best choice of director for this type of film. Jim Gillespie is a guy who directed I Know What You Did Last Summer. Why did you choose him? Like of all people, why? Cuz he if, if you're trying to make a movie that's gritty and has a little bit of, you know, slasher sort of elements, don't hire the guy who made one of the most bloodless slasher movies ever made. Uh he Jim Gillespie is no John Carpenter. He doesn't have the style that Carpenter does. He doesn't have the style that Wes Craven does. He doesn't even get even come close to being as good as someone like Robert Resnikov, but for some reason Robert Resnikov, who directed the first power, never got another chance to direct anything again after he did the first power. But Jim Gillespie, yeah, he got to direct this and he got to direct Venom. Now I gotta be honest, this is what I'd probably say his best film. This is Jim Gillespie's best film in my opinion is I see you. Uh, but I really think the film could have been so much more with a director who wasn't a, didn't have an aversion to blood. Because it, this film really kind of, really did need that. It needed a little bit of that. Uh, Rennie Harlan would be a good op option. He knows how to do that type of thing. And he already works really well with Stallone. So, you know, because he directed Cliffhanger. So, I think the, the biggest problem this film has for me is the direction. And because of the direction, there are some moments where there's some awkward edits. Because the director doesn't really care. And because of the director, who doesn't really like gore... A lot of the places in the film that could really benefit from being bloody and visceral really aren't there. Aren't there at all because the director is, I don't know, is he afraid of a little bit of blood? I don't know what it is. But anyway, I See You is a film It was also known as Detox. It was actually made and finished in 1999. And Universal had plans on releasing it. And but Universal ended up disowning the movie. The film was actually intended to be released in November of 1999 or May 2000 by Universal Pictures and producer Brian Grazer, but it was delayed for several more years in the United States. Universal tired of the film, sold its distribution rights to DJ in the USA, and finally was released theatrically three years after its completion in barely any theaters. Um, Early press material credited both Ron Howard and Brian Grazer as executive producers. Their studio, Imagining Entertainment, was also listed as a production company, and the completed film does not feature their names or Imagine Entertainment's name or logo. Ron Howard was actually interested in directing the film at one point, but he decided to direct How the Grinch Stole Christmas instead. We made the wrong decision, Ron, because if you had directed this other than Jim Gillespie, might have been a little bit better too, but at the same time, this movie's ten times better than The Grinch Who Stole Christmas. And that's a movie that you didn't disown Universal, you didn't disown that, but you disowned ICU. Um, and this is interesting too about John Powell. Now I really like his score, and I love how it's a really beautiful score. But this also makes it kind of I don't really know for sure if it really his is his score now. John Powell was a composer of the film, and he wrote two complete scores for the film, one of which was which was rejected. With well, the film delayed and literally banished to a European release by Universal due to the studio's dissatisfaction with the film in general, most of Powell's score was replaced with additional music by William Ross, Jeff Zanelli, and Nick Lunny Smith as an attempt to make the film salvageable, which makes me confused now. I don't know what John Powell did and what John Powell didn't do. Um, so now I don't really know, but I know whoever did what, whoever did the pieces of music that are, that you hear during the scene where Stallone's character, Malloy tries to attempt suicide and the scene, and the, and the scene near the end, I think are really well, excellent pieces of music. 
Um, While Universal disowns the film now, at least in the United States, there is proof that the film was produced by them as several of their DVDs spanning from the late 1999 to the early mid-2000s featured a brief introduction of recent films in their DVD catalog. Quick shot of Sylvester Stallone from the film looking around with a gun in his hand is seen after brief glimpses of other films such as The Mummy, Snow Falling on Cedars, and to name a few. The Big Kahuna DVD is one of the few in which you can watch a snippet of this film of the film in this form in this form. The Big Kahuna. That's a movie that I don't even I don't think I've ever seen and I don't know very many people have actually remember it. And that's a movie you didn't disown, but you disowned this. I I'm sorry. I will I will stand up to I will fight for ICU. I don't think it's that bad of a film. I don't think it's that shitty of a movie. I don't think it's that generic of a thriller. I don't think it's boring. I don't think it's lackluster. I don't think it's any of those things. I think the direction could be better. And I think some of the editing is kind of awkward at times. But that's it. I, I really I, I disagree with a lot of people's criticism of this film. Saying that it has little to no character development. It has enough with the char main character. And I think the whole point of the film was to... Put you in the shoes of Malloy's character, Jake Malloy, played by Stallone. So when he's in this uh, rehab facility, that he doesn't know that much about the people around him either. So if he doesn't know that much about the, about the people around him, then you don't know that much about them either. So that makes you basically puts you in the same place as Stallone's character is. And I'm sorry, there's it's not necessary to have character develop deep character development for every character in a film. That, that it's not necessary, okay? We don't have a lot of character development for every character in a lot of great movies. The Shining, you don't get a lot of character development. You don't get a lot of character. I mean, maybe except for you know Jack Nicholson and a little bit of showy development. But really, to be honest, The Shining, you don't have a lot of character development. You know who they are, and you know that they're a couple. Shelley, you know, uh, Shelley Long. Just like Shelley Long. Uh, it's uh. <laughs> I think it think it is actually though. <laughs> I swear I think it No, it's not Shelly Long. It's the other what's her name? Fucking Ah. Here I am pausing, trying to find out who the fuck starred in The Shining. And I feel like a fucking Shelly Duvall. Okay. It, her first name is Shelly. Fuck. Shelly Duvall. God damn it. Fuck. I didn't want to do that. Anyway, because I know people are like catching me on that. Like, man, you're distracting. You're looking up names. I'm like, fuck. Shelly Duvall. Damn it. Anyway, um, that's what I'm getting at. Not every great film has character development for every single character there's enough for you to care that's all that matters to me I don't need to know every in and outs and the in and outs of every character and every film in order for me to find the movie entertaining and worthwhile I'm sorry if, you, if you're like one of those people then there's a shit ton of movies out there that you never gave a chance because you decided to bastion and say it's a piece of shit because not every single character including side characters has a deep backstory Give me a fucking break. It's not being fair to the film. Another thing I don't like is when people say that this is... It's cliche. It's by the numbers. It's, you know, there's nothing new. And my opinion... I'm going to be the guy who's going to say this. No shit. Because this is a slasher. This isn't really a slasher. This is a mystery thriller. And, you know, the... And then there were none type mystery. Where there's... They're in the secluded location, and somebody's picking them off one by one. You already know. You've seen that done many times before. For me, what makes it unique is the the, the unique ability, the, the unique uh, the unique feel and touch. You know, the unique uh, element that it has that Stallone is the lead in this type of movie, which is like a mystery thriller with some slasher elements, and he's never done that again. So that, for me, is enough for me to be engaged in the film, because I really like Stallone, and I think he does an excellent job in this movie, performance-wise. I think it's one of his best acting performances. So it really does work for me in that regard. And for me, I didn't see the killer coming. I didn't, I didn't see that coming. I didn't see Slater being the killer originally. 
Of course, now after you know I've watched it more than once, I know that. But I don't know how you could say that you predicted that coming because they didn't show any. So they didn't really zoom in on anything or really show you a lot of pictures or footage of him hanging out with Stallone earlier in the film. So it was a good. It was a pretty good revelation to me, at least to me anyway. So I, I don't agree with that. And I and at the end of the day, I'm not gonna bash a movie and say it sucks. And say it's a poor film because it's not 100% original. That doesn't exist. That movie doesn't exist. Especially when this movie was made in 1999. It was, it was damn impossible to make a thriller with this type of plot 100% original. It's impossible and you're not being fair to the film. I, I'm just going to be that kind of guy. I'm going to be that guy who's out of the box with his reviews and my, and my, you know, my, my uh, stance on this whole... It's not original type bullshit. It doesn't have to be 100% original. It doesn't have to be a 100% original film to be enjoyable for me or to be an entertaining movie or to be worthwhile because I'm not going to kill a movie. I'm not going to grill a movie because it's not the most original thing that you've ever seen because that's not fair to the film because it's impossible. You know how many... There's been millions of movies that have been made direct to video and release in theaters. This isn't the 70s. This isn't the 60s. This isn't the 80s. This is the 2000s. We've got... We've ran out of ideas so much we're starting to remake movies from the 80s. So... Or movies nobody cares about like Victory with Stallone. So... I just think that's not being fair to a film... By just solely really criticizing it for it not being 100% original. That's not being fair. It's not giving a film a fair shake. Because it's impossible. I'm sorry, it really is. You can take any movie and compare it to an older movie if you want. It's just that's the way it is. There's been so many movies made that it's impossible for it to be any other way. If you believe otherwise, be my guest. But logically... It's not statistically possible for a film, especially now and even in 1999, to be 100% original, especially in this genre. The mystery thriller genre, and, the, and then there were none type flick. Yeah, if it did add an alien, it was an alien doing it, it wouldn't be 100% original because Predator and it, it came without warning did it before. The, did it before. Or it wouldn't be original, you know, if it was a, you know, a, a, uh, you know, a killer because it's been done before. So, the only way for it to be original is to be do stupid shit. Like, if it's a fucking gay killer for some reason, and he's gay and he's killing people, then you'd be like, what? Why? Or it's a fucking gopher running around killing everybody. That's the only way it'd be 100% original, and that would be fucking stupid. So, I'm sorry bashing the film by saying it's cliched, uninspired, and by the numbers, is not fair to me. Because this is a plot line that has been done a million times before. So it chose to do this plot line, and in my opinion, I thought it did a pretty good job with it. I think it did a good job with the twist. I didn't see it coming at first. And, you know, it was a good comeuppance for the killer at the end, and some, you know, decent bits of character development for the characters, a really nice bit of atmosphere, and that's another thing I don't understand people bashing it for. Like, it's, it's re I don't like it. It's a rehab center in the middle of nowhere. It's depressing. What? You want a foo-foo, sunshine, happy-go-lucky rehab center with fucking rainbow, rainbows everywhere and pots of gold and candy stripers and, and, and candy canes? And make it, you want them to go to rehab in fucking Candyland? I, I'm sorry. Unless you're doing a horror comedy, that doesn't work. I like the location here. I like the setting. It really adds to the film. It adds to the atmosphere the film has. You take that away, the film honestly suffers. So, I don't have an issue with that either. Not every rehab center is happy-go-lucky. They're like, well, oh, it's depressing. They're already depressed. Why do they go to a place that feels like it's a prison? Because the re that's kind of what pretty much rehab is. It's not all the Hamptons. It's not all the, you know, the rehab center in, in L.A. and Hollywood over here. A lot of rehab centers aren't like fucking, what is it? What's the name of the one Hollywood? I don't even remember what the fuck it is, but it's a special name that's a famous rehab center. They're not all like passages or some shit where you go in and you're just, it's like a vacation. You know, rehab centers sometimes have to be a little bit tough. 
because the type of people they're dealing with aren't going to react well to some foo-foo, sunshine, happy-go-lucky resort. Especially cops and hardened cops. They'd be like, what is this place? This is a fucking joke. So anyway, yeah, I'm, I'm just putting it out there. But anyway, yeah, I don't agree with the criticisms by the majority of the critics who completely scathed, just gave scathing review after scathing review and destroyed the movie and put it down because it's unoriginal, no shit, this type of idea has been done before. I know that. Why would you bash a film for something that it just, it cannot, it can't fight that. It, it's like, that's what I'm saying. It, it's impossible for it, it to be anything 100% original. Instead, it does stuff stupid shit like I told you. A gopher killing people instead of a killer. So, what it makes up for with not being completely original is with a good cast and with the unique element of having Stallone in this type of movie. In a thriller. In a mystery thriller with slasher elements. And he's never done that before or since. So that's what I think is what's unique about it. And people overlook that. And they just focus on the plot. I understand. Yeah, the plot may be paint by numbers. But it doesn't mean it's a worthless piece of shit. I'm sorry. Salone's performance, in my opinion, more than makes up for any kind of problems the film might have. It's not like, like it's the first movie that did that. There's a lot of movies that did that. There's movies nowadays that come out of the same goddamn thing. So, and even Sabotage, like I said, it's the same thing, been there, done that. But if I liked the characters, and if I gave a shit what, about what happened to them, and if the lead was good, I would, I would overlook that. But the fact is... There was not, that was not the case with Sabotage. With my with ICU, I like that. It's a cop killer. He kills cops. And he ends up in this rehab center in this really well, nice, really, this sort of, it was like an abandoned shelter, like missile silo or something. It's a really nice bit of atmosphere with that. And I, I think the idea of a rehab is that there is no escape. You can't escape. You can't get away. You have to face your demons. What better way to face your inner demons than to be locked away in a missile silo in the middle of nowhere with nothing but a blizzard surrounding you. There's no escape. You can't escape from your demons. You have to face them head on. That's what I thought rehab was all about. I didn't think rehab was about drinking fruit punch and and, and, and sipping pineapple and chewing on pineapple and having massages and going to like the the experience of just going to a spa. I thought rehab was a lot more was something a lot more, you know, tense and a lot more serious than that. So I never had an issue with the location. I don't have an issue with the plot. I don't have an issue with the performances. I don't have an issue with the character development. And that's the majority of the criticism I see for the most part. Or it's uninspired, it's lackluster, the the character development isn't very good, and the, it's not a 100% original movie. No shit, Sherlock, I know that. But it doesn't mean that it's a movie that deserved to be disowned by its by the company who was going to release it, and I and I know Stallone doesn't even like it to each his own. But I hope he's at least impressed. I hope he's at least pleased with his performance because that was not a problem. In fact, that's the reason why I like the movie so much is because this Stallone film where he delivers a, he once again proves that he's not just some caveman in terms of his acting. And delivers a very memorable, very well done performance as the lead Jack Jake Malloy. And you feel for him and you watch the film for him. You watch the film for his journey. You're not watching it for the journey of everybody in the rehab center. I could care less. They are cannon fodder. I know that. That's what it is. It's taking sort of the slasher trope. But I'm watching it for Stallone. And if you're watching it for Stallone... You get a good Stallone movie. So I think that's, I don't know, maybe people were expecting something else or much like with Paycheck, they thought, because you know people thought John Woo cannot direct sci-fi, which I think is bullshit. He has to direct just strictly action movies. He can't, can't give him the benefit of the doubt with a sci-fi movie. And I guess people couldn't give Stallone the benefit of the doubt with a thriller. And they didn't do it either with Get Carter. So, which is, has a little bit of a slower pace as well. It seems like a lot of movies that Stallone does are typed to be thrillers. Don't really end up being well liked by critics. Assassins, I can understand, but I see you. I don't get it. I think it's actually a pretty well crafted thriller, which is surprising considering the director really was the, not the best choice. 
Now, pretty much now I'm going to get into the plot. I'm just going to go in really fast with it because it's a really simple, straightforward plot. Salone plays this character named Jake, Jake Malloy. He's an FBI agent. At uh, the beginning of the film, I think does a really good job showcasing the relationship that he has with his wife, uh, or his would-be wife, played by, I believe it's um, Dina Meyer, played by Dina Meyer, who, who plays Mary, his wife. And you get a little bit of, you know, get nice little touches on their relationship. He goes and tries to buy her a ring, nice little fun lines of dialogue. They have some fun lines together. He's like, a monkey? Like, why don't you just get me flowers instead? He's like, well, you know, flowers are yesterday's news. You know, uh, have you been reading Cosmo Cosmopolitan? It's monkeys. Monkeys are the new language of love. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's the kind of fun stuff like that. And so then he ends up, so you get a little, there's not a lot of character moments with the characters there with Mary and Jake, but there's enough to know that they have good chemistry, Dina Meyer and Stallone, and you know that these two care about each other. And so when what, hap when, what happens to her when she gets pretty much killed by the killer uh, while Stallone is on the phone, and the killer's talking to him and saying, you know, what a lovely wife you have pretty much, and he's like, she's at my house. He's at my fucking house! You know, and then, and then you know, he's tried, the cops are telling him to Stallone to keep on the phone so they can get a trace on him, so they can meet him there, but of course, then being too late. And there's an excellent scene of acting by Stallone where his reaction to his wife, just her eyes drilled out with a drill. She's hung by with, by, with a noose on the ceiling fan and, and I like the way that we're, we're shot too, where the police officers they part, and then Stallone sees his wife, just this grisly image of his wife just hung and dead. Because earlier he saw another image, another sort of fun scene where he and his buddies at a bar, chatting, and there's this one guy, and he's all like, "Yeah, you guys know that. You guys know I'm an asshole." They're like, "Yeah, yeah, you're right." He's like, "Yeah, you sure are an asshole." <laughs> you know? I didn't have some fun lines of dialogue there. But that guy, actually, asshole guy, is being killed by the killer in a brutal way. Gets his eyes drilled out and actually gets a billy club shoved down its throat. And I like the performance Stallone has when he's at the scene of the crime. And I like the performance even earlier in the bar where the guy's calling him out. He's like, you that FBI guy, you don't give a shit anymore about, you know. And Stallone does a good job grilling the guy. But then the guy's dead. And I like the scene where, you know, they're taking their time with the crime scene. He's like, could you just at least take the goddamn billy club out of his mouth? Can you cut him down? You know, at least give him that respect. He's a cop. For, he's a cop, for Christ's sakes. So, anyway, so, I like Stallone's emotion. I like I love his performance. I thought he did a really good job in this movie. So then, after he finds that, then, of course, then he ends up finding his wife hung and her eyes drilled out. And Stallone's performance, acting-wise, I think is one of his best ever. The music syncs up really well, too, and he sees his wife, and the looks of anguish on his face and the tears in his eyes are genuine. This is excellent. This is a textbook way to uh, convey a believable emotion, in my opinion. Um, excellent scene. And then afterwards, he ends up spiraling out of control. He starts drinking and... Um, he ends up actually trying to commit suicide. There's a good scene where he, uh, is in, he's drinking in the bar and he gets confronted by Charles S. Dutton's character who has a good lines of dialogue where he's telling him, you know, like, if you're going to sit there and piss away your life, piss your life away, why don't you just take this gun and put, take it, but, you know, it's like, sh just put the bullet right in your brain and get it over with. That's not the exact lines of dialogue, but it's the gist of it. And Stallone actually takes the gun and shoots it in the air. And there's a nice little bit of grit in that scene. And then afterwards, he tries to commit suicide. And the way the editing is done, I thought was really well done. With the When it f does a little bit of flashback to black and white shots of you know, his wife, Mary. And then he did, the music is excellent in this scene. And he's looking up at his the ring that he was going to give her that he's worn around his neck now. And he takes out a knife and slits his wrists. And then it fades out, and then it fades to this wilderness in the middle of nowhere, the snowy wilderness. And uh, and then it ends up cutting back. He's still alive. He recovered, and Charles S. Dutton has taken him to the rehab facility that he mentioned to him earlier in the bar that Stallone, you know, 
didn't really care about because he had another good line of dialogue where he's like, you know, if I hadn't have met her, this would have never happened. She'd still be alive. You know, I was, I'm where I, I'm where I should be. I'm where I should be. You know, it's like, I'm where I should be, right where I am. It's where I should be. That kind of thing, you know, and you're like, man, Stallone did a great job with conveying the depression of a man who's lost the woman that he loved. And then he gets put in the rehab facility and introduced to the rest of the cast. You got Chris Christopherson as the former cop who decided to help other cops with rehab. Uh, Doc, Polly Walker as Jenny, who's, who's the doctor. Um, this guy named Miff who plays Brandon, who really doesn't have much of anything to do. He's just some tall, bold, sort of imposing dude. Christopher Fulford plays Slater, we find out who's the killer. Um, thought he did a really good job. Sadly, he didn't do that much afterwards because nobody saw the movie. Jeffrey Wright plays Jaworski, does a good job. There's this you know, tweaky sort of character. Tom Berenger does a decent job as Hank, the mechanic. Uh, and handyman around the place. Stephen Lang has a brief role as Jack. He's almost completely unrecognizable. He's not grunting. Maybe that's why. Alan's, and he hasn't taken any steroids either. He's really slim and trim. I think he's wearing glasses too in this. Alan C. Peterson is Gilbert. Angela Alvarado is Lopez. I thought she did a really good job there. Brief role that she had. Robert Prosky is Mackenzie, this former Mountie guy. You really felt for him and the story that he had to tell and why he's where he is right now. Robert Patrick as Noah is this really dick bag of a dick bag of a SWAT officer. Um, Robert Patrick played a great asshole in this movie. Courtney B. Vance, brief, brief role as a reverend. Thought he did a good job for what he had to do. And then you have Sean Patrick Flannery as Connor. I thought he had a really great scene of acting where he was explaining about this story, this really tragic story about because he was a part of this squad, a cleanup squad, and he found that there was like a bomb had blown up 21 preschoolers and he was talking about, you know, there's just hands everywhere, the fingers, and they were finger painting the same day, man. And then, I, and then of course, then you have, have to have Robert Patrick acting like a complete ass and, um, you know, saying stuff like, stuff like this. Um, he's just really bashing the guy. He's like, oh, you shouldn't have, well, you pussy, you shouldn't have gone into cleanup crew anyway then, man. And then I love how Salone's like, you're real good at kicking them when they're down, aren't you? I do all right when they're standing up, too. You never stood up to anybody. Yeah? Well, at least I'm there for my women. And then, of course, you want Salone to deck him right then and there. But he does, he, he, he waits for the right moment. And then he does, he doesn't really deck him, but he verbally bitch slaps him. In this awesome scene where they get a stare down, and Stallone's like, "You talk about my wife again, and I'll kill you." <laughs> yeah, so, so yeah, um, and then also it happens to be that this tough guy actually is not so tough after all, and because Slater ends up putting him at gunpoint later in the film, and he's crying like a, crying like a girl, and I even like how Slater's having fun with that. He's like. <laughs> Some tough guy, huh? <laughs> Look me in the eyes. I want to see your eyes before I kill you. Anyway, um, so yeah, uh, there's some other stuff I forgot to mention earlier in the film I like. The little bit of shootout scenes you had in the beginning where Stallone's chasing after the killer in the beginning. Um, more good acting by Stallone uh, before he gets and figures out the mystery about where this blood trail is leading to the killer's hideout. Um, just a lot of good things about this movie, to be honest. So anyway, what happens is it becomes uh, uh, a whodunit in in this uh, in this uh, rehab facility in the middle of nowhere. People start getting picked off one by one. That's the problem I would have to say, since the director doesn't like blood and guts. It's very generic. That's generic. That's generic and bland. The kills, I'll give you that. There's one that this guy was hung. That I thought was all right, but they are pretty generic kills. I'll have to give you that. There's some that you don't even see the person get killed. You just it fades to black, and the guy's like, ah, and that's lame, lame. And that's because of the director. Um, but you know, I like the atmosphere. I like the scenes where you have people going out in the middle of the snow, and then the killer sneaks up on them. And it's like, and I want to see more of this. I want to see another slasher, a true slasher movie that's really gory and upsy ante in the snow. 
And I know the producers of Friday the 13th remake wanted to do that, but uh, nope. No, uh, even though the movie was a hit, they said, fuck no. And then the producers of My Bloody Valentine remake wanted to do that too, and they said no. So every time there, there could be a good slasher movie in the snow with a high body count, a lot of the studios seem to just turn it down for some reason. Like they have an aversion to snow. Like they think it would be a bad thing and it wouldn't work. And I don't know what it is, but I would love to see that. And it does add a lot of atmosphere. And in the middle of a snowstorm, you can't see shit. You literally can't see shit. So a killer could easily sneak up behind your ass and behead you. And it just adds for a lot of suspense and a lot of nice moments of where you can have someone, you know, sneak up on someone and kill them. You know, that type of sort of, you know, moments like that. Suspense. And the movie does a right job building suspense. And it does a decent job with the paranoia aspect. And yes, it does remind me of the thing. The thing is better than ICU. Of course it is. John Carpenter's a thing. And that's the ultimate in paranoia. The ultimate paranoia horror film. Because it does borrow elements, like the whole rest of the people who are survivors think that Stallone is the killer and they lock him up just like the people in The Thing did when they locked up McGready. So, McCready. So, you really know the whole sort of thing that's going on. So, it, of course, you know Stallone's not the killer. But, I was saying the direction is the biggest issue. The if it had been direct direction, didn't have an aversion towards blood, then the scenes where the kills happen would have more impact. Because as it is, there's not much to it. There really isn't much to the kills at all. And then after a certain point in the film, it, the direction stops being flashy. The director kind of stops trying to be artistic like he did with these earlier flashback shots of black and white shots of Dina Meyer, you know, Stallone's wife, and just decide to, to do really bland, just stagnant shots that do feel like a TV movie. Also, the director doesn't know how to use his budget. He had a $55 million budget, and the movie looks like it was made for 20 I mean, that's a problem. You have $55 million, and it looks like a $20 million movie. What happened? Did it all go to the cast? Did the ca did Stallone ask for half the pay half the cost of the, 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 the movie in order to be in it? I have no idea. But anyway, so as the film goes on, it's just more and more. People start showing up dead. Stallone ends up finding out that it's the killer, that it's the same guy who killed his wife. A bunch of other cops in a nice scene where he finds his dead body, and he looks at, lifts up the eyelids, and he sees "I see you" written on the inside of the eyelids. He's like, "I see you, and you see me." And um, so then he decides to okay. Now he knows who the killer is. The killer knows. Pretty much knows he's found out, so he starts killing some more people. Really, not much to it. That's one of the biggest problems I have with the film. But I have it like the scene where Jenny's running away in the snow, snow, and Slater's coming after her. It's like, run, Jenny, run! I'm coming to cut your fucking heart out. So, he goes and chases after her. Stallone ends up uh, going after her, saves her, smashes through into this old cabin. And gets in a, a little, in a decent fist of cuff with Slater. I like how Slater ends up stabbing Stallone in the arm with a knife, but Stallone still ends up punching his ass, punching him in the face with his other arm. It's a nice crowd pleasing moment. He's beating the shit out of this guy, the man who killed his his wife, and then has a great comeuppance. Beats the shit out of him. He punches his ass into this thresher and then punctures his chest. And then the guy's still talking shit while he's bleeding out. So Stallone pulls him out off the thresher, lifts his lifts his ass over his head, and is like, "I see you, and you see this," and then just body slams his ass on onto on top of the face first on top of the thresher. It's a really really great, really nice comeuppance, and I like the one-liner. I do. Is like, "I see you, and you see this," so it kills him. And then he meets up with Jenny. She's sitting, and uh, his uh, friend uh, Charles S. Dutton, the character Charles S. Dutton played, who was um, Hendrix. And Hendrix got shot earlier by uh, by Slater, but he ends up being all right. And Stallone asks him, "You know, how's the fish?" He was like, "I see." <laughs> and then. I really like the end, the way the film ends with this really great end, sh this shot, how it ends, where he takes the the, the necklace where he had the ring he was gonna give to his wife, his would be wife, uh, you know, Mary, before she got tragically murdered, 
and he takes it off his neck and he hangs it on a tree and I like the way it's shot and I like the music that plays and then the film fades, fades on the image of Mary's image superimposes on that image of the ring hanging on the tree and Stallone and Jenny walk away it's a new beginning for, for Malloy he's faced his inner demons and he's gotten revenge and he's finally found the guy who killed his wife and so many other cops and and uh, nailed them literally nailed them uh you know with uh you know killed his ass fucking punctured his ass you know through really did get his revenge there so anyway yeah i really don't know what to say about icu except if it does sound interesting to you give it a look i know i gave away a lot of the stuff but it's mainly if you're a big fan of Stallone and you haven't seen it yet give it a look because Stallone does a great job in this this is a great Stallone flick it's not necessarily the best thriller ever it's not necessarily the best whodunit ever because I, I can say that yeah it's not anything I've it's not like it's anything I haven't seen before but as a Stallone film it, it is you've never seen Stallone in sort of a slasher movie ever again you've never seen Stallone you rarely ever see Stallone in a, in a, in a thriller so I you know I think it were and that and in itself is enough for me to really give the film good notes because at the end of the day that's what it is it's a, it's a Stallone movie and as a Stallone movie it does a great job I don't think it deserves to be one of considered one of his worst I think it's one of his most underrated films he's done anyway I've always liked the film I liked it ever since I first saw it I, I've introduced it to almost everyone I know I know I introduced it to my family and they all enjoyed it everyone in my family that I've introduced this movie to liked it so you know, what do you know? Um, but anyway, I really don't know what to say about ICU because I rate it a five star. I'm going to give it four. Four out of five, mainly because it doesn't get five, doesn't get perfect marks because the director really, honestly, isn't the best choice. Jim Gillespie really, honestly, should have been replaced by somebody else. Eric Red, Robert Resnikoff, Wes Craven in an ideal world, in a, in a fantasy land, John Carpenter, uh, somebody who knows how to really do a good slasher film who knows how to have that sort of element and isn't afraid of blood which it seems like Jim Gillespie is so um but anyway he's trying to be too much like Hitchcock and he really honestly ended up sucking cock instead because honestly you're not Hitchcock stop it if you're going to do Hitchcock then hire Brian De Palma then to direct your movie that might be interesting. Brian De Palma does good thrillers like Raising Cain and so forth. So maybe he would have brought a little more style to the film as well. But anyway, um, thanks for watching my review of ICU. And I will see you guys later. See ya.